Hey there guys, what is going on? My name is Rabbit and welcome to episode number 5 of our playthrough for Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth. So in our last video, we did a little bit of derping around the Tower of Trials, mostly just for the sake of checking it out and seeing, you know, what you can actually gain from that experience. So it's primarily there for you to do a lot of grinding, to do a bit of leveling. You can acquire some nice items, some nice drops such as seals for your coins, which we're going to move into in just a second. As you can see, we are here in the coin shop. But before I do that, let me back up a little bit. I did end up making some changes to my party. I also was able to gain some levels, um, switch around devotions a little bit, and I did end up using that Sonova Codex that I was questioning. I used it on Happy because she didn't necessarily have an alliance to any of the spirits or the gods yet, and it just gave her Sonova's aid. What Sonova's aid does, I don't really know, but hopefully we will find out as we dive into more of the tutorial stuff. I'm hoping it'll come out at that point because I'm not 100% confident that the game itself is going to instruct you on what that looks like. So the other thing I wanted to share with you guys was I did try to get in a few attack sessions just to remind myself whether or not I think it's worth it to set those up. So as you had seen in our previous episode, I was putting a few people in attack session mode just so that if someone was placed conveniently on the other side of them, I could knock the enemy into them and then they'd hit it back. That's kind of how the attack session works. It's set up to where ideally, if you get like, let's say three people all facing in a specific direction, so you have everyone facing south, let's say, and then person number four, who's at the top of the line, or I guess that's person number one, who's at the top of the line, hits an enemy down into person number two. If person number two is in attack session, then he also hits the enemy, so continuing the damage line, and he hits them south as well into person number three, who does the same thing, and then hits them southward into person number four, et cetera, et cetera. You can make some really convoluted like attack session lineups where you can try to get six people in the line. We saw Limeray talk a little bit about that, but I wasn't trying to necessarily string anything like that together in our last video, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that because I was thinking afterwards like, oh, I wonder if everyone understands what the attack sessions could be because I didn't elaborate on it and I was just throwing everyone into attack session form instead of defense form. But that's something that I'm sure we'll look at when we dive into the actual tutorial section for it or just through fights themselves. I personally feel like the attack sessions take a little bit too long to set up. I guess if you see an opportunity, trying to be mindful of it and seizing that opportunity is a great thing because you can get item drops, but ain't nobody got time for that. I'm not sitting there trying to force attack sessions to happen, so we'll see what happens. Okay. So what I really want to show to you guys is that I have made quite a few coin purchases. So we will just scroll on down so you can see I've got double of everything except cures, of which I have many. I try to put one cure on everyone just because even if someone is not necessarily proficient in curing or in using the coin thyme, I think it's still nice to have that extra helping hand to get a heal off here or there. So what I'm really wanting to show you guys, let's just choose, I don't know, let's do one of the cures. I wish it would show, oh it does. I was going to say, why doesn't it show me who it's on? But derp at the top of this box, right where the red line is drawn, you can see the name of the party member who has it equipped. This one is on Trish. You can see I gathered a lot of seals by going through the Tower of Trials just Holy crap, there's so many. And you can see a new color slash element that we haven't encountered before. I think I talked a little bit about this, that there is a dark or a black coin. I don't remember at what point you can get them or how you get them, but I know I've seen them before. And here is a dark seal. So obviously it is not looking like it is a good thing to put onto this cure, but we can kind of scroll through. Some of these are going to give very nice buffs, if you will. I mostly just want you to see how some of the ones that are named differently kind of scale up in terms of their level. So like the ones that we would buy here, these would be considered like level ones. And then from there, I don't know how you would really tell what they are outside of just remembering at what point they become accessible. I don't know. I think there will be a way for us to tell at some point, but for now, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know. 
Let me see. So that's not going to be good for cure. Should we try to bring up one of these? Ooh, Entity is not good for Zal. But we should keep in mind that Entity is there. I'm thinking it might be good on a different element. I don't like this with the potency dropping that much, though. Not feeling it. Not at all. Let me skip to the top. Faz Entity. Look at that, guys. Look at... Woo! What a buff that gives him. So this one, uh, maybe not the best. I mean, it does lower the coin point cost by three, but it drops potency by one. But then this brings potency up. So we can see what happens if we combine them. I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference, but let's just look at the potency, for example. So 20 and then maybe minus one. So we might see it at 19. Let's just see. And yeah, it looks like the difference isn't going to make it that worthwhile. So I'm just going to merge this with Entity. We'll call it good. And then I am going to do more engraving on my own. I really just wanted to bring you back so you could see the coins that I have. And once we return, I'll quickly just scroll through the stats of my party members. I let go of Chester and someone else. I think it was Aesop. And then I hired two other recruits that I tinkered with a little bit. But you guys will see that shortly. So give me just a minute to finish my business and we will meet outside of the coin shop. Okay, my darlings, welcome back. So I did do a little bit of tinkering and just merging those seals, and, or I guess I should call it engraving, not merging. Don't ask me where I'm getting that verb from. But anyhow, let's quickly just scroll on through everyone's stats so that you can be caught up to speed. Faz is now level three, so you guys can check out his stats there. I'm not gonna really highlight anything except the fact that he was able to unlock an additional Gil, I think is what they're called from the gods and it was counter 10% which is very nice let me quickly scroll on over to this menu so you can see that he has Grula and then as I already noted I gave everybody cure so checking out Lime Ray same situation he's got Blisu, Cure, Bonga he's level 4 and he still has pretty much everything else equipped the same so moving along I have a new bitch named Candy that I haven't used yet but I uh, I think I acquired her after I let Chester go, just because, I don't know, I wanted to. So there you have it. So she's got nothing. Krista is still looking great. Level 4. She not only has Goat's Aid, or Goate's Aid, but she has XP plus 10%, which I think is going to be nice. I actually like the, the bow and arrow wielders a lot, so it might be something that I look into later, having an extra person. So here's another new recruit, Mercy. I replaced, I think, Aesop with her. Nothing else on her because I haven't really utilized her yet. She's just a backup. Metaleve, level three. This is what Metaleve's got going on. Cure, Gaiga, Zell, Blisu. Trish, Bonga, Lyra, Cure, Grula, level three as well. Aisha, still kicking it and keeping it real. Cure and Gaiga is what she's got. And then there's Happy with Cure and Lyra. Also loving Happy a lot. Hitting level four was a nice little change there. And she has acquired Sonova's aid through the Sonova Codex. I shared that with you guys already at the start of this episode. But then in addition to that, she acquired Kashis's aid and Dev plus 10%, which is nice. So Kashis really appreciates you getting your shit together. And that is it for our team regarding how they've changed without you guys. So not that much to share. The last thing I wanna show, just to let you know, I'm not making it up. I'm not gonna derp around here in the Tower of Trials right now, but as you can see, we can automatically skip from floor one to floor five. So if you're going to make some time to go through the different floors, try to always do it in groups of five or else you're really going to be doing a lot of repeating and it just gets old really fucking fast. So with that being said, Although I think in an ideal world, maybe getting everyone up to level four or five is going to be nice before approaching Satan Hills, I think we're fine. If we die, who cares? We already saved. It's not a monumental loss. I don't think we should die, but we're just, we're going to see how this goes. And it could honestly, oh man, it could 
it could be anything. So I'm making no predictions about this, but I want us to advance the story, so let's do just that. So this douchebag named Sajiri says, ah, this is a sight to behold. Sly responds, yes indeed, Sir Sajiri. These soldiers that were assigned to us by Emperor Fernandez are outstanding. With them, we can probably take Aus all by ourselves. Oh, other quick thing that just occurred to me. Sorry, very random, has nothing to do with this conversation at hand. I did go back into the options and the icon scrolling, I had originally upped it to four. I decided to just up it to five to make things a little faster when we are just scrolling around the world map. So if you notice that moving a little faster, I did alter it just a bit. So everything is on five. And I know I said I wasn't going to put everything on five, but I did. So, meh. So, Fernandez are outstanding. The troops, yeah, with them, we could probably take Aus all by ourselves. Already read that. Very true, sir. Sly replies. We'll get to the Tower of Wind first. If I succeed in taking over that tower, I'll most likely be assigned the task of capturing Aus as well. I'd love to see how Alvin's going to react to that. React to that? Whoa, somebody get the Fine Brothers in here. I hate how he looks down on me, treating me like an inferior. Whoa, salty dog over here. S sir please be careful. Oh, sorry about that. I got a little carried away. But that's what Alvin's gonna get, sooner or later. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Don't you love it when you start laughing maniacally and then your friend just joins in just because? Ah, good times. Uh, excuse me, sir. What the fuck are you laughing about? A group of mercenaries, presumably from Nightweld, are approaching the area. Mercenaries? Do they think they can defeat us? The fearsome army of the Velamian Empire? Oh well, I guess it'll be a good exercise for our men. Tell everyone to prepare for battle. Okay, so that includes us, I'm sure. Time to prepare for battle! I'm always prepared. Not... So I think this fight should be easy, but you never, ever know. So to beat Sajiri, we shall. So let's pull our squad. I think I'm going to position Lime Ray and Faz. Yeah, I'm going to Faz here, Lime Ray here. I'm going to put Krista here. Just kidding, Krista. I'm gonna move you here. I'm gonna put Boomerang Bitch. Where are you? Happy? Right there. Now I've entertained, like I said, getting a second Boomerang Wielder or a second real archer. But what I did was I gave Trish, who is also a healer, I gave her an era, which not ideal. It does lower the potency of some of her magic using or coin using, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. So then for this last person, I think I passed already, we're going to bring in Aisha because she knows what's good. And this is going to be the squad. So like I said, this can either go very well or very badly. So this is mission number one here at Satan Hills or Satan Hills. Let's go. Mission start. All right, friends, and just so that we are not... Oh, my bad. I did not mean to do that, Limery. Please excuse me. Just so that we are not going to have an incredibly long episode, because I don't know, maybe this fight will only take 10 minutes, but I'm anticipating anywhere from 20 to 25, just depending on if the soldiers are going to heal and what's kind of going on. Like, let me see. What coins they have? The soldiers themselves might not have any coins. No, doesn't look like that douchebag does, but Sajiri... He's got XP plus 10%, so he might be leveling up during this fight. And Sly, pointy hat, so he's going to probably be a magician. He's got Spica, there you go, black coin, and then he's got Cure. So actually, doing an attack session on him might be a good idea so we can try to steal that. Ah, oh, that drives me nuts, you guys. Drives me fucking nuts. And the same thing here, so that maybe we could get another lucky charm. I don't know. So I'm more than likely not going to be doing attack sessions on these randos, but truly to acquire some good stuff, we might need to go out on a limb here and try to just set up for attack sessions. So I think that kind of confirms that I 
am going to just move this to our next episode. I don't know why I keep doing this. Basically, you can see what order everyone's in and who's a friend and all of that. But you can see it at the top, too. And if you go ahead and hit the right, what is it, R1, you can see every enemy is in red. So just thought I'd highlight that for you if you're like, what are you doing, Rabbit? Why are random numbers popping up and random colors accompanying some of those, those shades and all of that jazz? So... That is it from me, my loves. In our next episode, we will tackle mission number one. We will defeat Sajiri and Sly here at Satan Hills. And then we will see what ensues from this point forward. So thank you for watching. I am your host, Rabbit. And this is my semi-blind playthrough of Hoshigami ruining Blue Earth. I'll catch you in episode six for our first true battle. <laughs>